I trust that all of us will sit back, relax, and just enjoy a fine style um, as we serenade, as we encourage, and have served in our this year, in this year's couple, and have served Hewitt's view for over 17 years. And we thank the Lord for them both. And so at this time, I'm going to ask the escort, um, Sister Shakira what Wallace, and um, Kevon McDonald. Um, well, like, Jamel is not able to be here um, to be present now to escort our honorees. Um, could we all stand together as we. Music courtesy of Matthew Spence and his team that is here streaming on YouTube. And just want to shout out all those who have joined us on YouTube. Welcome. Enjoy this appreciation service for the Reverend Conroy Donaldson, Sister Norma Donaldson. And so we will observe the seating at this time.
an opportunity to serve in this world. And this afternoon, Father, we are delighted that you have called the dance into serving over these many years, but particularly here on this property, the Youth Through Baptist Church. But more so, Father, the church family, the community that you have used them and his wife to minister these last 20 years or so. Our Father, we, we thank you for them. We thank you for what you have done in their lives. We thank you for where you have brought them from and what you continue to do in their lives. And we are confident, Father, that they are your children. And this evening we pray that as the Unity Baptist Church, seek to honor them for the service that they have done, that in their hearts, Father, you will bless them even through the service in a very particular way. I pray you will encourage somebody else in the audience to be moved to be a servant of yours in a deeper way this evening. Even that you might call some young men or women to special service through the ministry this evening. Truly, Father, the work is great and the laborers are few. And we pray you would raise up more, even as some have given the all and continue to give what they can give, even in retirement. Oh, Father, put a benediction of your blessing upon this service today. And when we shall have come to the end of it, may our hearts be encouraged to serve you and serve you and serve you again. For Christ's sake. Amen. All right, thank you. May we seated. Wonderful. We are going on. I am Pastor Dennis McCall, Pastor of this church, but I am not the chairperson for this evening's afternoon. And I've seen my chairman here. And so I am going to ask him shortly um, to come and to, and to take over and to chair the rest of this program. Um, yes, he's, he's here. All right, and our chairman is the Reverend Dwayne Henry, pastor of the Vineyard Baptist Church and also administrator of Fairview Baptist Bible College. Um, this young servant of the Lord, you know, is willing to serve whenever time we call on him. Um, he has done a couple of funerals here too, as well as huge view. And so we are delighted in having Pastor Dwayne Henry come and to share the rest of this very special program in honor of the Donaldsons here this afternoon. Put your hands together as Reverend Henry come and take over from here on. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Macau. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Indeed, it's a 
great occasion that we are gathered for this afternoon and I am so excited to be with you and Reverend and Mrs. Donalds. We continue in the program and we now have the welcome and acknowledgement which will be done by Mrs. Jean Dickens.
This will be followed by the reading of the scripture, St. Matthew, chapter 5, 13 through 16, and the name of the Macaulay will be for us, following the praise and worship. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. At this time, we will be doing two Latin verses. And the first one is, we are together again. We are together again. Just praising the Lord, we are together again in one accord. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We are together again. Just praising the Lord, we are together again. Amen. Thank you very much, Delano, for reading for us this scripture. We will now have an item, and this will be done by our sister Kenya Thorman Jones. After which we have the greetings, AIBC Reverend Gary Williams, I believe Reverend Watson will uh, come in for him. I do for Zone 2. I am not seeing Minister of Light Green. I don't know if somebody is representing him. And then we have Pastor Randall that is supporting him. 
Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure and a joy to be gathered in this fashion. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Praise the Lord. Lift your hands and worship the Lord. Thank you very much, Jesus. God, we have to do the Lord. Definitely, we need to worship the Lord. Jehovah is your name.
and the region are all hoping that you would have done well. The reality is, you didn't make one big soup or got a tremendous inning, but you patiently deal with one ball at a time, one over at a time, one bowler spell at a time until the inning was over. You both supported each other with those in between over talks and encouragement. Whichever one was up to the back, the back up from the other was commendable. I know this to be true because that is the only way you could have come this far. Now we join hands and hearts to honor you. We say thank you for giving yourselves to each other. Thank you for giving yourselves to the Hewitt's New Baptist Church for the past 17 years. Thank you for giving yourselves to the Association of Independent Baptist Services in Jamaica. Thank you for giving yourself to the service of the wider body of Christ. But most importantly, thank you for giving yourselves to the Lord. On behalf of the executive members of the EIBC, the churches in the association, we salute Pastor Mrs. Conrad Donaldson, a great, a giant in the work of the Lord, Jesus Christ. God bless you. Our honorary members, Reverend and Mrs. Donaldson, guest speaker, Reverend Watson, ministers in the audience, those online, Pastor Mahal, Post Pastor, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my pleasure to bring greetings on behalf of Zone 2. Zone 2 comprises of the churches in St. Elizabeth, of which Hewitt's View is one. During my tenure as chair, working with Reverend Donaldson was a great time. I must say, Rev, I can't recall we ever called a meeting and you were not present, even at a late notice. It is also true that as a young person, he always treat me with utmost respect. And even though it is your appreciation service, I appreciate that about you. And so this afternoon, as a zone, we are celebrating your work here at the Hewitt's View Baptist Church. And we can say to God be the glory, great things he has done through you, Reverend and Mrs. Donalds. Even this building that we are under this afternoon is a reflection of the work that Reverend Donaldson has done here at Hewitt's View Baptist Church. And so as you retire from the pulpit, I know you are not retiring from God. I pray that He will give you added strength and years to live on to enjoy your retirement. Once again, on behalf of Zone 2, we say thank you for the work done. God bless you and God continue to sustain you as you enjoy your retirement. We will be moving down and we have an item by the saxophone, Mr. Luca.
Amen. Thank you very much, Mr. Miller. Indeed, it is the mercies of God that kept the Donaldson while they didn't let go. God's mercies kept me. God's mercy kept them. They didn't let go, I believe. And we can see they were faithful to the task. Thanks again, Mr. Miller, for that. We now have the introduction of the guest speaker. Ms. Kadeen Witter will do so, after which the Hewittsville Baptist Choir will come, and then Reverend Godson, Reverend Watson, will come and speak. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's my pleasure to introduce the guest speaker for this function. He is no stranger to us. He is a son of the soil. He leads a busy life, wearing many hats, but is never too busy to give a listening ear or lend a helping hand. He pastors to our churches here in this parish. They are Providence and Christ Group, and serve on many boards and committees. He is a married officer as well as a justice of the peace. Since December 2016, he rarely sees by himself his wife, Mistress Mona Watsi, who so ably compliments his ministry always. I pray God continues to use the servant of his faith to challenge the heart with the world. Please help me. Gratefully welcome our guest speaker, Reverend Godfrey Watson, to impart to us what God laid on his heart. Congregation, Reverend Watson, Reverend Watson, Congregation.
evil. All of these people were just that people. Fellow in our text is no different. When I read about the life and the ministry of Elijah, I am amazed at his courage and at the power with God. Yet I'm reminded by the word of God that Elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are. He was just a man. James 5 over 7, humble and obedience before God. Today as we look here at the passage, Elijah first of all, a man sent from God. Elijah was a common man. I speak of Reverend Donaldson, a common, ordinary man. He was no prophet, he's no prophet. In the terms of being a prophet, he's just a common man who came among us and made himself available to be used of God. When we think of his home, as he made his home available for members of the congregation here at Hewitt School to visit. And the verse tells us that Elijah was from a place called the Tishbite in the region known as Gilead. And Gilead was a rough mountainous area known for its high peaks and deep valleys. This tells us that Elijah was a backwoods man. The Reverend Donaldson knows what is it to be in the trenches and in the bushes. And so his wife will tell you that she is and was always behind him. When he steps on the scene, Elijah began his ministry, his methods, and his mannerisms, and his message was rough and rugged as a place he called home. And I'm sure that those of you who would have been under the ministry a Reverend Donaldson here would have recognized the ministry, the methods he used for preaching, his mannerisms were not always very polished. But he delivered a message that the people could understand in their own language. Elijah's method of dress was as strange as anything else known about man. But when you watch Reverend Donaldson dress, we will say in today's term, he dressed down. Watch it when he puts on his suit and how he, he dressed and watch him how he walks. Yet he never loses a touch of the common man. His humility, his humanity, sorry, his humanity are given as an interesting insight into the prophet uh, Elijah in the book of James. Elias was a man subject like passions as we are. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. James 5, 17 and 18. As one fellow follows the life of Elijah, it becomes clear that he was a mere mortal. He was also he was a man with a, a fiery temper. He was prone in his bouts of depression. He also suffered from loneliness due to the life of solitude from which he ministered. 
The emphasis here, my brothers and sisters, is that the Lord is not looking for spiritual giants to use for his glory. He's looking for humanity and the commonness of people. He's simply looking for people who will readily obey his word and follow him where he leads them. You see, nothing at all is known about Elijah, Elijah until he steps on the scene in the presence of King Ahab. He was a nobody from nowhere. But he was a handpicked by the Lord God to do his will and to carry out his message to a wayward nation. I can tell you of the story that when Reverend Donaldson came to these parts, came to hear what you. I'm sure that there were those who had some doubts about the man. There were doubts about him. But you see, later on it was noticed and observed that he was picked by God to come to this place and to carry out the message that he has carried out these 70 years. God doesn't need the rich, the educated, the intelligent, the beautiful, or the movers or shakers of this world, this world to get his work done. God will use the common man and the man of humanity to get his work done. And some of you here today may think that you can't because you are common. Remember that David in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 6 and 7 and verse 12 God had chosen to work through the lives of men and women who will simply heal themselves and make themselves available to him and like Elijah and like it is said in Isaiah, here am I, send me. Send me. Isaiah 6 verse 8. The bottom line is this. God wants your obedience, surrender to his will, more than he wants anything else you can give him. And the surrender that our brother surrendered to the Lord some 17 years ago when he walked foot on this compound, this premises, this property, that we see how God has used Elijah. Elijah was a common man. Secondly, Elijah was a courageous man. Listen, Reverend Donaldson had a big heart. A big heart. He defined the foolishness of people. We read in the word of God, the king of Israel during the time of Elijah was a little told of a, of a man named Ahab. And according to the Bible, in 1 Kings chapter 17, uh, 16 verse 30 and 33, Ahab was the most wicked king that ever squatted upon the throne of Israel. And besides that, he was married to a richly evil woman named Jezebel. But thank God, that is not so. With Sister Norma. <laughs> no, no. Not so with Sister Norma. So, in this, he cannot be compared to that. Yet, it was to this king that God sent the prophet Elijah and walked right into the presence of King Haman and delivered the message of the Lord without flinching. He told Ahab that there would be no rain or dew until he said there would be and he took courage to defy the wicked rulers. This building you see here took a lot of courage. A lot of courage. Because I know that there were members of the church, there were people who said, it can't be done. Where is the money going to come from? You remember that? Yeah, you're not going to say yes. But you remember the challenge that he had that he, he decided he was going to go all out. He was going to get to his, his friends abroad and pastors that he had known and he did get it done. 
come back the day, sir, because I was here for the opening. And I want to say, well done, brother, because here we are in this magnificent building, a building that can do a lot of things. In fact, this is the only hall within the Independent Baptist um, Church right here in St. Elizabeth. So congratulations. They said, as we look, as he demonstrated such, such courage and defying the, the foolishness of those who had opposed him. But secondly, he denounced all religion. My brother, pastor, Reverend Donaldson, stand and stood up for the word of God, and he preached it. When Elijah made his announcement, he was declaring war and bail. And it took great courage to stand up against and before the chief promoter of the false religion in any effect and say, my God is greater than Baal and I prove it and God is going to shut him up. And many of you who are here and are listening can recall those conversations. But it took courage. Here, sitting here today, being honored as a man of courage. Can you imagine how they must have laughed at him and mocked him? That is the kind of courage we need to see manifested in this day. This brother took it. Courage. And this kind of courage that is derived from spending time with God. From angry indignation over the sins of the nation. This is the kind of courage that stands up against the ridicule. It is the kind of courage that protects things. And he stands up for He was a man of courage like Elijah. A man, a common man. Thirdly, he was a committed man. Elijah was a committed man and so was and is our brother Reverend Conrad Donaldson and his wife. Committed. They gave their all to the ministry and the work here at Hewitt School. They spent long hours here the testimony of our brother speaks well in this community and in this church. The name Elijah means my God is Jehovah. Today we salute our brother pastor for his courage. You could depend on him. Pastor Henry spoke about him always be present even at short notice when meetings are called. You could depend on him. He was a man that was dependent. By walking in the presence of Ahab and Jezebel in the name of Jehovah, Elijah was demonstrating that in his life of ministry, he was totally dependent upon the Lord. He was not trusting the arms of flesh. And he was resting upon the everlasting arms by faith. There's a huge difference, my brothers and sisters. This is the secret of every child of the living God in this world. Only when we are totally yielded to God, in total dependence, we will be assured of success. And so we can say that the Reverend Donaldson was indeed a successful servant of God here in these parts of the vineyard and laboring here at Hughes. He was a devoted man. His devotion, his devotion to his wife, his devotion to the church. And notice the phrase Elijah used before whom I stand. Elijah was standing in the presence 
of the king of Israel, he was standing in the presence of the one of the most powerful men of his time. Yet Elijah was able to see beyond all the traffic of the throne room of Israel. Elijah knew he was standing in the presence of God. He knew he was there. That knew he was there to hear the cry. That was the only reason or the only person in the room who would have been pleased at his name to hold. That is the attitude that God blesses and that God loses. And he blesses the man, the reverend, and an extension of his wife. Fourthly, Elijah was a confident man. A confident man. In the person of God, notice that Elijah believed that God was alive, and he said, As the Lord God of Israel liveth. Most of those other folks were living like Jehovah was dead. Sounds like to some people around. The Reverend and Mrs. Donaldson lived that their God was alive and is alive. And because God was alive in them, you see, he made sure that he, he presented God to the people in the community where he served and by extension those who he come in contact with. Elijah's God was alive. Is your God alive? One of the tragedies of the modern church is the lack of respect we have for God and his ability. And today, a lot of people, even church people, are showing a lack of respect for God and his ability of doing things. And I just want to remind you that we serve a God who can do anything. Anything. He can meet any need. He can heal any disease. He can stop anything from taking place. He can cause anything to take place. He is a God who is all powerful. Nothing is so hard for him. God help us if we quit living like God was then or on vacation. God help us to remember that He's God at all time in every situation, regardless of what we face in life. That He is God. And our brother and his wife demonstrated that to the wider church family. We see the promise. In the presence of God, what happened? This man stood before Ahab because he had received the word from God concerning this matter. And Elijah had enough sense to know that when God told him something was going to happen, it would happen. And my friends, God will never, never, never back away from a single promise he has made to his people. He will not desert you and leave you to flap in the breeze. If he has made a promise, he will fulfill such a promise. My brothers and sisters, I trust today that examples shared here the life of Elijah are seen in our brother Reverend Donalds and extension Sister Donalds will challenge you and I in giving our all and our commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Reverend Donalds, we salute you and Sister Donalds. You came, you saw, you conquered. You have been the common man but courageous, committed, and confident. May God's blessing rest and remain 
and abide with you as you retire from pastoral ministry, but continue to serve our great God as he gives you the opportunity. Let's all strive as people of God to be like Elijah for the glory of God. God bless you richly, my friend. Thank you very much, Reverend Watson, for addressing the honorees. Our MP Honorable Clark Green has arrived. We might say he's late, but he arrived at a good time. Yes, a very good time, because it is the offering time. So, my brother, you came at a, at a very good, good time. You could not have come at a better time. And so before he gives or moves his greetings, we receive the offerings. And I think our brother, Matthew Spence, is in charge. So I'm going to invite the ushers to come as we receive the offerings. Miller, Mr. Miller gonna play instead. Um.
We thank you for the service here at USD. Thank you that today we can come to celebrate, to appreciate the service of God. Thank you that we are privileged to give back to your cause. Bless that which has been given, and I pray that you, Lord, will be glorified in the use of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. And I now invite our member of parliament, Honorable Floyd Reed, to come and give us three minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman, Reverend Henry, Reverend Donaldson and Mrs. Donaldson, Reverend Watson, other ministers here, Pastor McCall, other specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, everybody. I was going to apologize for running late, but then I realized that God's timing is perfect. So, as our chairman said, it does appear that I came in just in time. But I do still apologize for being late. It is a difficult time of year. It is a, a back to school time. And um, I have a number of functions today, but I could not miss this function. And I said it was even to pass and say my few remarks. I wanted Reverend Donaldson and his wife to know that the community the constituency and their member of parliament is grateful for their service. And I want to start there because you know we do have a culture in our country where we oftentimes save our praises for when people cannot appreciate it. So many times we hear the most glowing words being spoken about somebody who cannot hear the words that are being spoken. And we do not take enough time to while people are able to appreciate the praises to give those praises. Dysfunction is one of those occasions where we are rightfully telling people that we appreciate them when they can appreciate them. So I, I want to commend the church for bringing us all here and for bringing Reverend Donaldson and his wife here to say thank you, quite frankly. You know, yours has been a life of service and sacrifice. It is not easy leaving any congregation of people. I have always reasoned that there are few professions more difficult than being a pastor and being a church. You know, easy people are not easy to maneuver. And especially when you're trying to take them on a journey to a better place. It is tough. And I, I know I know Pastor because my profession is different, but it has some similarities. But it's smile when I see. But when you're gone, it is a difficult task. But I want to commend you for speaking to the class and your wife for working together to ensure that you continue to touch and change lives. We know that your reward is not here, but there are so many lives that you have made better as a result of your dedication and service that we really owe you a huge debt of gratitude. And we see lives, but we also have communities. And I think we should give whoever is one a big piece of The church is more critical now than ever before. And we have to ensure that the church continues 
to move people and to move communities. And I've always said that the church is not the building. The church has to come outside of the building and get into the homes of the people. Families are better when they have appreciation for God. Children are better when they grow with the fear of the Lord in their hearts. And part of my worry, Rev, I will tell you, is that we are moving away from some of these principles. And as you have served, what we need are more people to stand up, put up their hands, and be advocates for Jesus. Yes. It is important, especially among our young men. And I want you this function to challenge to its to let us see how we can work together to get more young men into the fold of Jesus Christ. It is important. Don't we'll take it for granted. Because if they're not standing with Jesus, unfortunately. You know, he's saying that the devil finds work for idle hands. It is a fact. So I think the biggest testament that we can do is to continue the work of Reverend Johnson and his wife and get into the community and try to make sure that especially the young men are coming into the church. I am willing to support the church in any drive of that nation. So let us work together. And it will be good. I like when we put things in, I want to give it to the church, but it would be good, I just say it this way. It would be good if we had maybe something like a scholarship in the name of Red to somebody from the community who has done very well but has financial challenges. And as a member of parliament, I would be willing to put some funds to see that. But let us say put some funds, I don't like that. So let me say, I will be willing to put the first $50,000 to see that study. So, Pastor McCarthy, we will contact him and let us see how we can do that. Because I have found there are so many young people who have done so well, but they can't go any further because they just don't have the resources. So let us work together to do that. So, Rev and Mrs. Donaldson, enjoy the time. Come up your food. Don't get any drunk you too much. You deserve, you deserve it. Because you must serve. I will appreciate it. God bless you. Amen. Thank you very much, Minister Green, for your greetings. I must apologize for Pastor Legister. He will not make it, and so we apologize for him. Moving along soon. We now invite Hewitt's view, ladies ministry, to come. After the ladies' ministry perform, then we'll have the reading of the citation by Sister Rosetta Cohen. Then we'll have the presentation of the citation by Mrs. Latonia Harris McCall. And then we'll have an item by Shakira Watts. So I'll invite the ladies' ministry to come now and do their item.
सन्ना मन्नाना सब अंधिहार अपने लेडी पहले वो कुछ भी वो ये लोग किसी एक आम वाला टैंकिंग पर बड़ा 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 � I thank you, ladies. You are my backbone. <laughs> Without you, I couldn't have done it. And they did not use you. I love you. I appreciate you. I don't know if you know how much I love you, but I truly love you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Reverend and Sister Donaldson, our former pastor, but my pastor, member of the church of the clergy, visiting friends, members of the Hewitt's View church family, a pleasant good evening to all. I am super excited to read this citation for a couple who I have the utmost respect and love for. In recognition of your years of dedicated and indelible service to the Lord Jesus Christ and the Hughes New Church family, we express our deepest appreciation for your contribution to this organization. Reverend Lee, my pastor, yours has been a life characterized by service to humanity, driven by your Christian conviction. It is because of this innate passion for your fellow men that you decided to return to Jamaica after serving in Orlando, Florida at Mount Sinai, Baptist, Missionary Baptist Church. There you served in the capacity of Sunday school superintendent, Sunday school teacher, deacon, also ministering to the incarcerated, incarcerated through prison ministries view independent Baptist Church. You were inducted as a pastor of this church in 2008. Sir, you have served with distinction as a pastor, treasurer, and Sunday school teacher, among others. Under your leadership, this view has grown by leaps and bounds. Your eyes for beauty motivated you to undertake the, the renovation of the physical plant coupled with the completion of this magnificent church hall which is not only spacious and appealing, but also enhanced the ministry of the church. We must acknowledge your lovely wife, Sister Dr. Donaldson, who has lovingly devoted his full value and shared in his needs. Madam, we applaud you. You have served remarkably as a school superintendent, BDS coordinator, among other areas. Our church has benefited from your wealth of knowledge as you impart the word with passion and conviction. Your dedication in leadership has been impactful 
equipping the member, the membership to serve in like manner. We have fostered a spirit of camaraderie among us, which will long be remembered. Together, you have served as wonderful and compassionate human materials. Your love encompasses all age groups. You have been our spiritual leaders, counselors, and friends. Your desire to see lost souls come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior is unquestionable. Though through your leadership and involvement in the Awana program, as well as the contribution to the child evangelism oh, in St. Elizabeth. We love you, we respect you, and we wish for your union, long life, prosperity, and God's enduring presence, as together you continue in our master's service. Our heartiest congratulations to you both with everything. Thank you. 
On behalf of the Board of the Maker Child Evangelism Fellowship, it workers and volunteers, we would like to take this opportunity to say thank you. Firstly, for your dedicated service as a man of God to your immediate calling at the Review Baptist Church, and secondly, to your support of the Maker Child Evangelism Fellowship through our St. Elizabeth chapter. In reaching the children of Jamaica, your love for children and your passion to help them know our Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord propelled you to support CEF. This speaks volumes of the heart of a man who needed the call of the one who said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Once again, thank you for your love for the Lord Jesus Christ that allowed you to offer a life of dedicated service to your congregants, the community members, the family of CEF, and especially the children in Jamaica. May the Lord continue to bless you both as you await his next calling. You are in Christ, Michael Scott, County Director, Jamaica Child Evangelism Fellowship. Sir, you will receive your certificate at a later date. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. All the protocols observed, it's getting late, so <laughs> we're going to uh, go ahead and um, well, issue this award to Reverend Conroy. Donald it says a word of appreciation presented to Reverend Conroy K. Donaldson for your over 17 years of dedicated service to the Jewish View Independent Baptist Church. We look forward to St. Elizabeth, including pastor, treasurer, and Sunday school teacher on this day, August 26, 2022. I want to say that Reverend Conroy Donaldson you know, as a children has left um, that part of the ministry, uh, as he is now in retirement, in good standing. And so the, the church folks, they are good standing, sir. And I appreciate you for that. And also to say that we not only have one kitchen at this church, but two. And so, and about three, but two stove, one fireside. <laughs> so he, he has left us in good standing and um, those who come to work there here know that you can't go home to your work there. There's always food. Yeah. And so we appreciate you for that, sir, and the ministry here. It's wonderful church hall that we are enjoying. All thanks and praise to you in service to the Lord. And so the Hewitt School Baptist Church award you um, this award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alongside Herbert Donaldson and Sister Norma Donaldson, and uh, it says that a word of appreciation presented to Mrs. Norma Donaldson for your over 17 years of dedicated service to the Jewish Independent Baptist Church in the Fort of St. Elizabeth, including Sunday School Superintendent and BBS coordinator. And I tell you, they have done a good job over the years. When I came here in 2018, we had over 100 BBS students coming out and um, all thanks to their ministry and, and, and their work here. And so we want to say that we love you, we appreciate what you have done in obeying the call of God. And continue to pray for us as we pray for you. God bless you.
And if they are others, let's look at themselves, they can look quickly, and then let's move forward quickly to this stage. This is the fall that's coming. Anyone else? Good evening, everyone. Um, Reverend Donaldson and Sister Norma Donaldson. On behalf of the Mahak family, we would like to present this token to you as a love, as a plan for love and appreciation. We love you dearly, and we have been um, appreciative of all that you have done for the church so far, and we are going to be following in your footsteps. You know, we're we really happy for the good examples that you have left here for us, that lovely mark that you have left here for us. Congratulations again, and all the best. God bless you both. Psalm 63, verse 1. Children, 
that is good to Israel, even to such as of a pain. And I can just tell you a little bit of secret. This is Ray's favorite verse. <laughs> Reverend brothers and sister D, I am blessed to have you both in my life. Rev, your life portrayed that of Barnabas, who merited the name Comforter or Encourager, one of the most admirable men mentioned in the New Testament. This, his truly selfless commitment to ministry was an inspiration in his day as yours to me and the Hewitt's Church family today. You inspire me to give priority to people, not to possessions. You were willing to reach out to me as a woman in the independent Baptist organization dominated by men. You inspire me to draw promising young people into the ministry and make and to make commitment to those whose flaws or past failures have led others to write them off. Yet you stood your ground, sir. How could I ever say thanks enough for, uh, for all I have accomplished through you? A leader takes people where they want to be. For a great leader takes people where they part to be. I appreciate your kind, your, your gentleness, and selfless sacrifice for me, and you will be forever celebrated. Sister D, my mentor, my friend, my confidant, one who I can always depend on for positive advice. When my world seems upside down, you are always there to help me position it on its axis. I thank you, madam. May God continue to equip you with that positive influence. You have always adjusted your life to meet the needs of this congregation. You are a special gift from God, who I appreciate so much. God bless you. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. Good night, all. Good night. My gosh, I'm going to talk to you. Let's yeah. <laughs> show you the message. All right, so um, I'm going to greet you guys in court, but I'm going to give you the chance to do so. No, we're going to give you a great love. Um, so very nice to see you again. I'm going to just want to congratulate the whole period to be appreciated. I will send two songs. Um, that, of course, they were specific for the honor of the city. Um, I assume there are some of your favorites, so I'm just going to try to pick two of these songs. Uh, maybe it's not, because some songs like this for even for the crowd, we have to understand that these special people request the songs. Please enjoy.
and I have observed one common factor, the misplacement of the image. A heap of sentiment of the glory is given to man, when a small percentage is given to man. What percentage of the glory is given to man? Food. It's food for them. Right? The word of God says, My glory will I not take. It will not take. Why is it there of God? Well, let me tell you something. Why does that have all the way around the ship out in the world? They believe that I'm not together. No. Recently, I read the newspaper. These were American Yonkin Sandy Billionaire. I don't know about the Billionaire, that could be true. But I know for sure that the Sandy is not true. Because the word of God tells us it is he that has made it. And I have never said it. And I want us all to understand that is that our achievement, we should talk about it. Talk about it for the criminal, but talk about it. But remember we are guys that the to God in the world. We think. Yes. 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 Sister Diana, are extremely grateful to God for giving us the privilege to serve in his presence. We were sometimes like that. We were sometimes like that. Our presence here strengthens the fact that the good day for the day that we are. The fact that the God of the mountain, the God of the the fact that the God that is real, the Spirit, like most parts of the whole pattern, for the church to be told, it does not. But the point is, how does the church move forward? The church moves forward to me. Okay, if I can get me to me, you said I shall live, and you should live. And we are in trouble. It goes to me that way. Nobody wants to hear from the one they do. Let that strike in a one day church. We have to make sure that the two men have a spiritual aid, the spiritual aid, and the financial aid. Okay? So, I want you to do a short briefing of the financial aid. As newly installed pastor, I was able to keep the road running. Look at no category. This was possible. This was possible before God had already gave him the instruction. What were the instructions? My instruction was to teach and No. For the next couple of months after that. When you come to use you, you will die of time and nothing. In other words, the only thing we preached was about two weeks and five months ago was five months ago. One of the most important experiences we had was to see the young people tired of the way they came. Tired of some of them. When I saw others who tried to tell them what had happened in their lives, since they were coming into the time, it's better to do it. We do it. 
Look, this story asks about tithing on things, but it's turning point. That's what you think. In other words, we need to have a chance. We're going to go to another guy. We can bring all the guys to the store. Then they need to be in our house. And prove him. God wanted us to prove him. You must prove him. Prove him is taking him back to the earth and going forward as he is. And then turn to him who was sadly the fear of the bad, the sister, not the bad, gaining his point of view, fire of the bishop of the people. God has to make the faith of the fact that the Lord has to be fact of the Lord. The condition of the spiritual age and a minister in my mother. You look around and you say, oh, God, there are more people, 600, 500, 700, you know, you can't serve in that. How do I know that the spirit and the name, the spirit and the name, is in the denial of the I know it. The Father did not hear it. From the fear, I am coming in. You are coming in. You are in my cure. I got to the point where you can ask to do something to do and it's about it. I have found out it's probably three years ago. I didn't talk to him to the other family. I didn't talk to him to the other family. I didn't talk to him to the other family. I didn't talk to him to the other family. I didn't talk to him to the other family. I didn't talk to him to the other family. I'm not a citizen. I know that. I know this. 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 But when it's made in light way, it should not be left to work. A black man needs to be in. I don't know if you feel everybody talks to me. It is a great satisfaction to see the faith in the light way. I don't know if you feel like that. No matter I like to go to the world. You can see. He stood with me. But I really needed someone to stand with me. Because I was a new kid and a And I find that we have this new kid with the rest of our kids. New kid and a I thank, thank him for keeping the lady focused. Keeping the lady focused. You see? I found the lady of my service. I found her. Maybe you might have one here. But give it three what you can say about it. I think it's just something for this reason. I want to thank the lady that sees this as a church, for standing with me. Right? And I want to let them know that without them, we could not have happened. We can't be part of the game. I just want to make sure you and I are in the water is to be in the water. You have you have all the things and we have your life. 
Don't let me fear. You have all destiny. And me, this is the end of I mean, I heard sister, something near about walk there and I need to sit in. And I just like to ask her, not to try to walk there by yourself, make it one. Okay? Make it one. You got this? I found out to my wife. I don't have to tell you, it couldn't happen. Alright? It couldn't happen. Right? She's too bad. She was thinking I think she's too bad. I just got all this fun at her. And, and, and I don't want to say that one thing I love about my wife is that when I'm wrong, she's not going to be wrong. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Right? And how do you guys have to do it? I mean, you keep on doing this. <laughs> Forget to say thanks, 
but it's beautiful setting. I know it took a lot of work. It seems simple, but I know how much work went into it, and it's beautiful, it's elegant, and I say thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone that's involved. You all know who you are. I love you all. Let's do it! Amen. Amen. Now we move from one retiree to the other. And so I invite the Reverend Sylvester Green, retired pastor, to come and offer prayer for the Donaldsons. After which, Reverend Brown will serenade. Let us pray. Return of God. And our Heavenly Father. We pause at this moment to say thank you for your divine presence. We pause to say thank you, Lord, for calling. Reverend and Sister Donaldson into your service and for sending them to this part of the island in the parish of St. Elizabeth where they have labored assiduously for the many years that they have served. Now Lord I ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will continue to bless them. Continue to use their lives in a mighty way that they will continue to touch, to encourage, and Lord, even to comfort others though they are no longer in the pastorate. But we want to thank you that you are a God who continues to use your people until it pleases you to take the bread from us. And so I commit them into your hands. I know that there will be time of loneliness, Time when they will feel down. Times, Lord, when they will feel that even the God who they serve have forgotten them. But help them to remember that your word indicates to us, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. And so, Lord, I commit them into your hands. And I pray that whatever their hands find to do, even as they retired from public ministry, that they will do it with all their might. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you will meet their needs spiritually, financially, emotionally, mentally, and psychologically, because they're going to need it. And oh God, help them to rely on your word. They have used your word over the years to comfort and console others. Now they're going to need those same words to encourage their hearts. So I ask of you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will draw closer to them now and you will stick close to them than a brother. And oh God, I pray that even as they look and recognize that they have served you and even this occasion for this evening help them to know that there is a greater, greater, greater time that is coming and that is when the Lord Jesus Christ shall present them before the Father that having spot our wrinkle and he will do it without being ashamed. We ask that you will continue to use their lives, continue to bless them. 
And in the life that they have touched, may in turn touch somebody else. God, I pray in the name of Christ that you will raise up men for the ministry. Men that will be faithful. Men that will be dedicated. Men that will be devoted. Oh God, because we realize that in these days, there are so many churches without pastors. I ask in the name of Christ that even this evening's occasion might make an impact on someone's life. That he or she will commit his or her life to whatever service you might want or you shall be calling him or her to. But help them to know that they need to be obedient and to be available for you to use them. These verses we ask now, Lord, with the forgiveness of our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, we say Amen and Amen and Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Green.
Those people will enjoy and especially sweet stuff. <laughs> Pineapple, papaya, tomato, everything that is good for the body is in here. You know, sweet pepper is good for your body also. So, and we are happy with you. We just give you this. And we appreciate the work that you have done for us this afternoon. May the Lord continue to bless you. Thank you, thank you. We are moving down and the set is calling us closer. Don't worry, you will feel, will feel you up here this evening. Uh, Deacon Smith, please come. Much of the set, and so I just say all the protocol of observe. Let me first thank God for allowing us to have a wonderful evening. Thank our uh, chairman, Pastor Ben Henry, for taking the time off to be our chairperson. A job well done. Thank Pastor Watson for challenging us from the word of God. God will use the common man to get his work done. Thank Pastor and Sister Dallas for their work here at UCU. It is said that if you are too heavenly minded, you will become no worthy good. It is scripture. Matthew 5 and verse 16 said, Let your light so shine that men may see your good work and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Reverend Sister Eve, you not only shine, but you are shining bright here at UCB. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our pastor, Dennis Makak, for spearheading peace. And thanks to the members of the UHPO Baptist Church for working together. It was hard work. Thank Nisha. And I am Marlon work too. And thank Marlon for doing the decorating. I learned that they were still here at midnight last night. So you can just imagine. Thank to Mr. Matthew Spence and his team for providing internet service. To Sister Dickens for bringing us to welcome an announcement. To Delena for reading the scripture. Thank to Pastor Pusey and the young man from Chetlingham for providing us with music. Thank to Mr. Miller Saxophone for his rendition. It was soothing. Thank you, Sister Wallace, for I can. And thanks to Sister Kenya. Thanks to our member of Parliament and our supply team. It is not all the time that we have constituency representatives in our church, and this must be a new beginning. Thanks to the ladies for their item, if you know Reverend Donaldson. He's a strong supporter of the ladies, if you know him. Thanks to the members of the community. Your presence has been highly appreciated. Thanks to the pastors and their wives from the different churches visiting with us this evening. Thanks to Mr. Sala and the team for providing the food. God has passed by and rise with that way and get the Thank to Reverend Sylvester Green for praying for our honorary. And thanks to Pastor Darren Brown. 
I know the master are going. Thanks to everyone, I trust that you will stay and enjoy the ambience. Thank you all, and your presence here has been highly appreciated. Thank you so much. And thank you to Deacon Smith for thanking everyone else. I invite you to stand as we will be doing the closing hymn. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. I must apologize for Reverend Clifton Smith. He is not here. However, Pastor James is here. And uh, I'm asking to do the closing prayer. Please join me standing as we sing. It's on the back of your program. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus.
our labor will not be in vain. Lord, we ask your blessing upon the meal that you have provided. We tell you thanks and you ask that we will bless it to our bodies. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Reverend Pastor James. Just invite you to stand for the benediction, and we are officially dismissed here, and we go into the Father, we thank you for this time that we were able to gather and spend appreciating the work of Reverend and Mrs. Dallas. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to keep them and bless their life for the remaining time here they have on earth. May the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that comfort us, rest, remain, and the life with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen and Amen. Enjoy your meal.